Bob Kelly, uh, a longtime bank executive in Canada and the United States, former Bank of uh, New York Mellon CEO uh, and former CMHC chair joining us. Bob, nice to see you again. Thanks as always for being with us. Pleasure. Morning, John. So I think coming into this bank earnings season, uh, we were watching for a couple of things. We're watching for what was happening with loan provisioning, and then we knew there would likely be some strength from capital markets. That's clearly been a, a big driving force behind the numbers. Bob, what's been your takeaway from what we're learning from these big Canadian banks? Well, you know, John, I took a quick look at the numbers yesterday and this morning when TD and, uh, C and uh, Commerce came out this morning. I think the numbers are pretty encouraging. Uh, the big five all made over a billion dollars uh, in the quarter, which is impressive. That's always your first line of defense in a, uh, in a recession. ROEs are double digit. Uh, capital ratios are very strong. They're all over 11% and they're actually growing. They have good expense control. Revenue is not under as much pressure as, pressure as I thought. And it's a, I think it's a, reflect, a real reflection of, um, of uh, the strength of the Canadian banking system. It's well diversified geographically, as well as by product line and by industry. So, and that's really coming through, that you noted that the capital markets results are strong, and this is a good time for that to happen, and that makes sense given the, di the, uh, the uh, disconnections in the equity markets and the bond markets. Uh, it tend, that sort of business tends to trade at a lower multiple than retail banking, but it's very nice to have in times of troubles. You know, Bob, you've talked to us a lot uh, over these last few months about the state of the Canadian economy given COVID-19. Was there any takeaway for you on the state of the Canadian economy outside of the banks and their ability to navigate the storm right now, but, uh, but, but basically how the Canadian economy has been performing and how that's yeah. perhaps uh, allowed these numbers to be better than what you might have thought they would be? Well, you know, John, it's interesting when you compare for just to stay on the banks for a second. If you compare the, um, the stock market and the equity markets of how the uh, how the banks are performing versus U.S. banks versus U.K. banks versus European banks, uh, Canadian banks are generally outperforming their competitors elsewhere in the world. And I think that's a real reflection of what's going on in the Canadian economy. You have to remember that in the end. Um, bank performance is really a reflection of the economies that they operate in. So um, unemployment remains stubbornly high, and I think it will for some time. Um, obviously, our budget deficits are very high, but not out of line with the U.S. or Europe. Um, it's, uh, the forbearance issues are going to continue to be a worry as people look at uh, uh, credit losses for the rest of this year and next year. And uh, so I think Canada on a relative basis is looking attractive versus a lot of other Western economies in the world right now. All right. And, and when it comes to this outsized performance from the capital markets business, um, look, we know whether it's Wall Street, whether it's Bay Street, that can be an up business. It can be a down business. It can be choppy. Um, do you think the kinds of gains we've been seeing these last few months are the kinds of gains we can continue to expect if we're kind of living in a world with a lot of choppy headlines and maybe some chop choppy market activity? Well, you know, um, I'm kind of hoping we won't see them be that good in the future. <laughs> what I'm hoping mm. to see is that we won't have a, um, a second wave of COVID and therefore the impact on the, uh, on the economy. Um, and if that's true, what you'll start to see is we saw in the third quarter that uh, loan losses were starting to come down. My hope would be that in subsequent quarters, if we don't have a resurgence, they'll keep coming down. And then sometime next year, we'll start to see a release of some of those credit reserves, and that'll be a really good thing for banks and their shareholders. It's been, by the so way, it's been again, really impressive how, yeah. how well the banks have done with maintaining their very attractive dividends throughout this time. Yeah, you, you think that's something, just based on the numbers you're seeing as well, you, you're, you're fairly confident they wouldn't have to change tune on that? On that? I don't think they have to. Their payout ratios are going a little uncomfortably higher than I would like from the 40s into the 60s. Uh, but as long as the economy doesn't deteriorate significantly during the fall and winter, um, it feels like it's uh, sustainable, yes. 
So I think that's a, a good lead into um, talking about what the banks do from here. Um, you know, there's obviously still, look, they've provided a lot of flexibility, especially to Canadians who've been hit hard by the pandemic. And, you know, that includes a lot of deferrals of payments. Um, we mentioned your, your former role as the previous chair of the CMHC and, and Evan Siddall at the CMHC had made some headlines recently. He was urging some caution when it comes to lending to those who are, essentially seen as riskier borrowers, that, 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 that would only exacerbate some of the potential economic risks for Canada if we see too much lending when it comes to the mortgage market. Can you just give us your sense on how you feel about that issue? I generally agree with them. Um, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, we've had a lot of programs that have put, put in place to help Canadians and there's been a lot of forbearance that's gone on. I don't know if that'll continue throughout the rest of the year. It could be that the banks and Ottawa wants that to continue, too early to know. But it would seem to me, given that unemployment has gone to levels that are higher than in the Great Recession in the United States, and there's been so much forbearance, it's quite, still quite possible that uh, housing prices could decline at some point, whether it's later this year or perhaps next year. So I think Evan is and Evan Siddell is being um, is being cautious and conservative, and that's the right thing to do. I think the point he was trying to make in his uh, comments was that CMHC has to be a certain size in order to have a really good sense of what's going on in the housing and mortgage markets across the country. They also have to have good scale that, in the event of a downturn, they can quickly scale up and bring to bear other tools which the other uh, mortgage insurers don't have or don't have a mandate to do. And in fact, they may actually withdraw from the market if things got quite ugly. And that's the reality of private markets versus a entity like CMHC that has a safety and soundness role for the country. All right. And uh, just to broaden things out a little bit beyond Canada, Bob, obviously it's no secret for the last decade plus, we've seen a lot of the big Canadian banks looking to other markets for growth. Uh, earlier this week, we talked about uh, in the case of Scotiabank, for example, that there are other pockets of the world that are navigating through COVID-19 and those challenges reflected in how much money they're setting aside for bad loans. And even today, even though we saw some solid performance in parts of TD's franchise, the simple fact that they have a lot of exposure to the U.S. market at this time of uncertainty uh, poses some challenges for them. Um, what do you think the current environment, this COVID-19 reality, means for how Canadian banks think about their investments outside of Canada? I do think that over time they'll continue to think uh, that uh, diversification is a good thing. The Canadian American economies are, uh, are highly uh, linked and will continue to be in spite of any rumors to the contrary. Um, there's a greater question about, uh, like, for example, the Scotiabank, they have a different play where they're more of a global investment play. And there's pros and cons to that. And right now, it's a little problematic for them. Uh, but it can still be a very attractive play over time if you believe that even though there'll be some volatility in those uh, those economies versus a Western economy, hopefully over time they'll grow as quickly or faster. I think people will be uh, a little hesitant about making acquisitions in these uh, in these times. I would think regulators would support them in that. You want to maintain your capital ratios and you don't want to take a lot of additional risk. So at some point though, this economy, our Canadian economy will turn around things will slowly start to improve. I think bank managements and boards will be thinking about longer term strategy, how to add value while supporting the Canadian uh, borrowers as well as uh, keeping the deposit safe. And uh, they've navigated this pretty well for over 100 years and I think they'll continue to.